event in 2018 of Orlando, Florida. Our next speaker up is a 25-year terrestrial radio host come this November, 25th anniversary, with frequent red, uh, red Pill speakers and speakers from this convention like Rolla Tomasi, Richard Cooper, and Jack Murphy. In addition to that, though, when I first talked to him on the phone a few months ago about speaking at this event, I remember you know, hanging up the phone and immediately thinking, the intensity and level of masculinity this guy has is becoming, he called himself a dinosaur about it uh, in this regard <laughs> afterwards, but it really is becoming rare today. And for a variety of reasons, we don't like that. But it's really uh, powerful and almost uh, beautiful in a sense to see it. This level and intensity of masculinity, I think, used to be a lot more normal in America and the West. And it's, uh, it's badass to see it uh, come back at the event. Every year we have a speaker like this, older gentleman from a different generation who brings that to the table. And it's awesome. Without further ado, please help me welcome Pat Campbell to the stage. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Good morning. How's everybody doing? First of all, I'm honored to be invited here. Um, it was about a year ago, I guess, I officially got red-pilled with uh, Rolo Tomasi. I had always been sort of the same mindset, but I wasn't quite ready to make the leap. In fact, his books have been an epiphany for me. I found out that I'm what they call a trad con. And that is somebody, I am, I'm the goon squad for religion. I'm the enforcer. I'm the guy that shames you when you step out of line, or at least I used to be until about a year ago. In fact, Rolo has a fourth book coming out. He's offered me the opportunity to write the foreword for it, but it's all about religion. This is the linchpin to the rational male because religion is the enforcement mechanism for the feminine imperative. I'll talk more about that a little bit later in the program. But when people ask me, what do you do? I used to say I'm a conservative radio talk show host. That's sort of generic, and it tends to piss some people off. Other people go, oh, great. So I, my elevator pitch, and if you go to my Twitter account at twitter.com front slash PC1170, it says, I talk about things that matter with people that care. The reason I'm here today is you are the people that care. And I've got things to say that I think are relevant to this audience in particular. I'm a father of five, and I've got two boys, and I, I'm genuinely afraid for them as to what they're entering into in this day and age. Uh, in fact, I've, I've used the following to explain Rolo's book, okay? Imagine if your son wanted to play football, but he'd never seen a football game, and he doesn't know the rules, and you put him in a uniform, and you put him out on the field, what happens? He's going to be humiliated. He's going to be slaughtered, right? So the rational male, the entire series, which I highly recommend, is the, the rule book for playing the game, the game of intergender dynamics. The problem is the women have always had the rule book. We haven't had the rule book, or we've been fed a false uh, rule book, the what... what uh, what, what Rolo would refer to as like sort of a Disney-style princess, you know, one-itis kind of thing. We've been played. We've been played. It's time to wake up. It's time to take the red pill. And if you've got children like I do, I've got five, two boys, but even for the girls this is relevant. You, you need to read the book, and, and you, need, you need to pass on the knowledge. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start here talking about some of the things, just to give you an idea of what I do on my program, okay, so uh, let's see. About a week, two weeks ago, there was a story in the news about this 35-year-old hulking bodybuilder who beat the living crap out of his living girlfriend who was 21 for about 40 minutes, putting her in a coma, putting her in the hospital, and it was all triggered by him looking at her cell phone, okay? By the way, she went into court and tried to get the charges dropped against him. Fortunately, because there was video evidence that the DA had, what she wanted didn't matter. They're gonna prosecute this guy to the fullest extent of the law, right? Another little interesting side note too, um, his attorney tried to blame it, he's a competitive bodybuilder, on roid rage, and I said, hmm, that's pretty interesting. Then I took a list, a look at the actual uh, items that were confiscated from the house. 
He had amphetamines, methamphetamine. He had cocaine. He had ecstasy. And he had steroids. But it's the steroids that did it. And I'm thinking, yeah, this is, this is sort of a selective narrative. But it's important to note because it's more of the demonization of testosterone. And testosterone is masculinity. And masculinity, as you know, is what? Toxic. So that's why they nailed that. They don't tell you those other drugs couldn't possibly have anything to do with his crazy behavior, right? So back to the phone thing. And I'm, I'm going to tie this into a story here real quick. Anybody, if you're in a relationship, especially if you're not married yet, we always hear about controlling men, right? We don't hear about controlling women. They're out there. And they are legion. If you've got somebody that's checking your phone, male, female, that's a problem. That's a problem. And if you're not married to that person right now, get out as fast as you can. Because that is like one of the biggest warning flares. Uh, Rolo and others talk about, you know, the, the ink. They talk about the piercings. They talk about the hair color. If somebody's checking your phone, that's a bad omen of things to come. You've got a control freak on your hands, and it's only going to get worse. It's only going to go downhill, and they have trust issues. Get away. Get away. You deserve better. You deserve better. So we had a story uh, a few weeks ago about Bride Bridezilla. So this is a chick who was going to have a destination wedding. And I'm guessing it's probably her second or third, because usually on first time around, you don't do a destination wedding. So she's going to go to Thailand with her husband-to-be. She invites 150 of her closest friends. The cost, $3,000. Please RSVP as soon as possible. Only 15 people decided they wanted to go. That pissed her off. So she changed the destination. I'll make it closer. So she decided, we'll go to Hawaii. It only costs $2,000. This time, only seven people replied. Now she's really pissed off. And, and she, she's, she's got all sorts of demands. It's almost like a hostage negotiation. And uh, then she, she talks about the bridal registry. Oh, she, she, if you're going to go to the wedding, at the bare minimum, you must have a $75 or more gift. Talks about the bridal registry. She says, don't worry about the cheap stuff. That's all been bought. So this is, this is like a prima donna who feels entitled. And I, I wish I could find out who the guy is. Because first of all, man, there is somebody that needs to be red-pilled. I don't care how beautiful this lady is. I don't care how great the sex is. Nothing is worth that. Nothing. And, and, and if that's how you're going to start a relationship, can you imagine where you go from there? That ought to scare the shit out of everybody. So the, the Bridezilla story. Then this ran in, uh, let's see, the Daily Mirror. And it was, uh, the, the copy I've got here is actually from Fox News. I think Bored Panda picked it up too. And this one is a contract that a girl has with her boyfriend that includes 22 demands, okay? So it's like already we're back to a hostage negotiation. I got a gun against my head, okay? If you want me, these are the demands you got to meet, okay? L listen to some of these. These are all warning signs, flares, whatever you want to call it. So number one, you're not to have a single girl's phone number. Really? What about my mom? What about my sister's? What if we have kids and I have a daughter? What if my boss is female? I'm sorry, this is a deal breaker for me. Number two, I love this one. You're not allowed to follow them on any social media, including Instagram, Snapchat, and Twitter. That's interesting. I've, I've got I mentioned five children. Three of them are girls. My two oldest ones are married. Daughter number two, Rachel, told me something very interesting the other day, and she she sought out somebody as a spouse that was like dad. Okay? So my son-in-law, Sean, is very much like me. He's alpha. And she was telling me that her husband said she couldn't have any male friends on Facebook. And they're like, whoa. And I said, what did you say? And she goes, he's right. And then we were talking about another couple that we know, younger couple in their age group that are married. And the guy, the husband in that case, has an awful lot of female friends on Facebook and Instagram, and which leads my daughter and her husband to believe that, well, maybe he's stepping outside or he's ready to step outside. All right, but with them, it's, it's, not, a, it's not my son-in-law controlling her, but setting boundaries. 
and she wants boundaries. When you're raising kids, kids want boundaries. I was talking with Jack Murphy about a story. My youngest daughter is 15, and she wanted to go to the homecoming. And usually with me, my rule is you don't start dating until you're 16. She's just a couple months away. She's not dating. She just wants to go to the homecoming. They're double dating. So she goes out with her friends to get a dress. Okay, that's mistake number one, because the parents should have been there. And compared to all of her other friends, her dress was the most conservative. But the picture was sent to me, and I'm looking at it, and I'm going, what kind of a message does this send to young men, right? Now, the front, I didn't initially think was too bad, but it was a little bit low cut. My youngest brother, I've got two younger brothers. My, my youngest brothers are twins, and they're both Catholic priests. I'm the oldest of 13. So I sent this picture to my brother, Father James. And I said, what do you think? And he, he picks up the phone. He's laughing at me. He goes, are you serious? He said, if her chest was water, she goes, he goes, be pouring out all over the floor. And then, but the, the front part wasn't the bad part. The bad part, you turn around. And I don't know if you've seen what girls are wearing to dr the school dances nowadays, but the, the, am I doing something? It's getting an echo. The, uh, they try to expose the midriff, you know, push the limits. The higher, the better, the lower cut, the better kind of stuff. So on the back of her dress, there's an open space, but the back is also lace, very, I don't know, revealing, and it reminds me of, of uh, lingerie, right? And I'm there like, whoa, whoa, this, this isn't going to work. What kind of a message does that send to a young guy? I know what message it sends to a young guy. And I said, unless, unless I want a grandson out of wedlock or a grandchild out of wedlock, that's, that's a no-go. And I set boundaries for her, and we sent her back to get another dress, which was much more appropriate. But she wanted boundaries. She wanted, she wanted daddy to say no so that I could give her shade, give her cover with her, her friends. You should have seen some of the freaking dresses the friends had on. The girl behind her that took her picture, I'm looking at it. I, 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 first of all, it looks like a negligee, like the shortest negligee I've ever seen. Her mother loved it. Her mother thought, her, the other girl's mother, loved it, thought it was great. I, I, I can't imagine letting a kid out of the house, a girl out of the house, dressed like that. But that's what was going on. And again, what message does that send to young guys? I know the message it sends to young guys. That's why you're not wearing the dress, right? But kids want you to set boundaries. So I want to get back to this list here, too. Some of the other things. Oh, she says, you're not allowed to hang out with Keegan including his house or anywhere public. I don't know who Keegan is. As I started to read this list, I'm thinking, what is this, like a 15-year-old boy? Who, who would possibly sign off on this deal? Who would think this is okay? Who would agree to this? But apparently it's an adult. It says, uh, and the reason I say that is because they talk about going out drinking. You can't go out drinking without me. Oh, really? That's new to me. It says, uh, you're, not, you're not to uh, go to Honda without me. I, I'm not sure if that's a Civic or what. I don't know what that exactly is. You're not, you're not allowed to hang out with your friends more than two times a week. Says who? Says, you're, you're just dating this chick. You're just dating this chick, and she's setting the ground rules. She's, Rolo talks all, about the, all the time about controlling the narrative, right? This chick right out of the gate is controlling the narrative. This guy, this guy like, has been castrated from the start. Uh, oh, you're not allowed to look at a single girl. What am I going to do? Pluck my eyes out? Wear blinders? What do you want me to do? If girls come up to you at any place or any time, you are to walk away. Are, are you kidding me? What, what if my, like I said before, what if my boss is female? What if my coworkers are female? You know, what, I'm not allowed to talk to my mother, my sister anymore. What's, what's the deal with that? Uh, let's, uh, Mo is not to hang out with us every time we hang out. I'm not sure who Mo is. Oh, you are not to ask for head. What, am I supposed to beg? What, I mean, what do you, what, you're, you're not allowed to ask for a head. That's interesting. You lost me at number nine, honey. You lost me at number nine. <laughs> oh, this one, this one, if anybody gets married, if you do a prenup, you got to get this one. I love this one. I wish I would have thought of this one. 